What's up everybody? It's Mindy at Bayside Corals coming to you from Chile, Canada. We are in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in the middle of the prairies, the last place you would expect to see all of these corals. We are going to talk to you about aquaculture in Canada. <laughs> As part of our quarantine system that we use for corals before we put them out for sale, we also use it to treat our own corals that we're going to grow out. Now we just started that system so we don't have a lot of coral corals yet. We do have a tank that's just behind the camera right there. But let's talk about this system. So when we receive new corals, like you can see these ones here that have arrived recently, uh, they go into this first tank, which we call our receiving tank. We go over the corals very thoroughly in this tank. They get dipped like multiple times. We scour them for parasites. We look for anything that you don't possibly want in your tank. Um, Aptasia is a big one that comes in on wild corals. That's a real pain in the butt to eradicate from your tank. So we do our best to get rid of this from our corals before they go into any other tank in the system. So. Once we have decided that they've been in the system for a while, they're clear, they're looking good, we're going to dip them another time, and we're going to put them into one of these two tanks. After they've been in those tanks for a good period of time as well, we might trade them back and forth in those tanks and we sterilize them in between. After we do that, that's when the corals can go out into our retail store or the really nice pieces that we cherry pick and put into our grow up system. Let's take a closer look at these systems. Here's a close up shot of our receiving tank where you see the corals floating around that are waiting to go in this system. We don't have a lot of corals in this system right now because we're waiting for corals, really hoping that we would have this shipment in that we're waiting for so that we could show it to you guys what it looks like when it's super full of awesome corals. But of course, with COVID, it's been delayed, so it's kind of empty right now. Usually, this tank is absolutely packed, and we usually have to make room for new shipments. So, right now, we don't have too much. We got some micro moussas, psoas, cowbies, you know, and you can see that some of them have actually already been cragged as so they're getting ready to, to heal up and move on to another system. Often hair algae will grow in here, so we do have fish hiding, a couple tanks, there he is, and it helps get rid of some of the algae that's in the system. Now we do have a sump underneath, it's a fully functional system with live rock in it. Uh, a few times a year we actually bleach this system, completely shut it down to make sure that we wipe out all the parasites. This is one of our secondary tanks, you can see that all the corals in the system have already been fried. We got a bunch of zoas and pallies over here, some different cloth polyps and mushrooms. There's a bunch of soft corals in this particular system that are getting ready to move on to the next stage of quarantine. In this system, we're not going to find any parasites, any aptasia, flatworms, anything like that, because they've already gone through a few dips in the previous system. However, if by some slim chance something has snuck by, they go right back into that receiving system and go through the entire process all over again. This here is our fragging station. This saw has seen thousands of frags. It works almost every single day, whether it's making frags or cutting off pieces of corals that need to be removed. Sometimes you get bag rub when the corals arrive and they come a little bit damaged. Those areas die off and we need to cut it away. Once you cut it away, the corals usually just fine after that. Now this tank here is our grow all system. We have a few other tanks here lined up that are about the same size that we're going to start implementing in the future. But for now, we have enough space in just this one. We're quickly expanding it though so that we can grow as many corals as possible and offer them to fellow aquarists. You'll see some green star polyps number one seller in our store over the last 15 years. Everybody needs green star pulse when they start out, right? If you look for the bright orange portion in your screen, you're gonna see the worldwide corals bounce mushroom. That's the original bounce mushroom that we got from one of the Magna events in the US. And if you look on our YouTube channel, you'll see a video of it. Did kind of a Google through the water video that one's good to look at. Uh, and I believe we also did a video on how to frag the worldwide corals bounce mushroom, which is fun too, right? I mean, who wants to cut their bounce mushroom with the scalpel? Well, we did that. We do it all the time. That's how we make frags, right? 
grab your scalpels or our diamond saw. And all these corals, we can take one coral from the wild and grow it out and spread it within our community. That's what our goal is here, is to become more self-sustaining so that we don't always have to make corals from the wild, but we can easily grow them here ourselves. In this system, we also have a number of Ghania coral and Alvia coral flower pot corals. We find our customers really like those corals because they're so big and fluffy, but also they grow really well for us. So we grow out a number of them that are quite nice. Uh, we have on the other side a big dragon soul torch colony, got the space invader pectinia that grows really nice. We got Blasto, St. Thomas mushrooms. Babios, the Rasta Rampage Babio, uh, oh, Blood Diamond Babio. We got, we got a bunch of nice uh, named corals here that we're growing out for future tanks. This here is the result from all of our efforts with our quarantine systems, making sure that our corals are as happy, healthy, and clean as possible before they come out here for sale. It's all of our Zoas, Pallies, Philias, mushroom corals, we got Acrocorus, Montecora, the bird nest all in the other tank over there. We've got brain corals, Scalinias, Blastos, Acans, you name it, we've got all of it here. In these systems, we have a dedicated leather system so that we don't have the leather stressing out the rest of our corals. And we also have a system just for anemones. We've got rock flower anemones, colony anemones, long tentacles, that sort of thing. They go in here so they don't stain all of our corals. In addition to quarantining all of our corals before they go into our retail systems, we also have a fish quarantine system. Now we don't quarantine all of our fish, but we do offer quarantine for our customers if they would prefer for us to quarantine their fish instead of themselves. We started off with just a few tanks, but it's become really popular and we've now filled up the entire room to offer this to whichever customers want to do the quarantining for them. We do prophylactically treat them with copper to make sure that they don't have any parasites leaving. We also check for flukes and treat them if they're needed as well. We put a lot of effort into trying to make our corals as clean as possible so we're not introducing pests and parasites not only to our customers' tanks but also our own systems. Since grow out in aquaculture is what is the driving force behind all of this, we need to make sure that we aren't introducing this into our own systems. We have thousands of gallons of systems in the building here. The last thing we need to do is get some of those critters in there that are going to cause us all a whole bunch of grief. Well, I hope everybody at Restock at Home has enjoyed this short tour at Bayside Corals and our efforts towards aquaculture. Have fun and happy